What's up everyone, and today I want to talk about a new technology that I'm super excited about that is all of the rage in 2022 and going into 2023. Of course, we're talking about generative AI and chat GPT or GPT-3 or whatever they're calling it these days, large language models. And using these tools, in my opinion, over the next five years, if you're not actually going to be using AI in your workflow, you're going to be left behind. And the reason for it, and it's becoming more common to use AI to become more efficient in our day-to-day -day as the year progresses. So today I want to talk about six different ways that data scientists and engineers can actually use ChatGPT or AI to become radically more efficient with their own time. As always, you know that the AI would love it if you press the like button on my channel because it gives better AI karma, you know, down the road when they're deciding to spare your life or not. Right. So hit the like button and hit the subscribe button as well. Best use case of AI that I've seen is generally generating code snippets. And this is integrated already into tools like GitHub Copilot. But you can also do it with ChatGPT as well. The main thing here is basically those code snippets that you used to use when you were Googling, you know, how to display more rows on pandas. How do I parse JSON from a file? Now you can use ChatGPT or GitHub Copilot to instantly kind of create that code for you. And generally, this is pretty low cost, low risk, right? Because you're working within your existing workflow, you're getting these code snippets back, and you can see pretty clearly that it does what it wants you to do. And there's not a lot of like intense functionality. It's just a piece of kind of like memorization that we generally use the internet for that we now get inside of our code editor. For me, this is super easy to then kind of quickly make my own code 10 to 20% more efficient, especially because I can use Copilot to, you know, generate this on the fly. And I see that next five years is getting better and better, especially as it expands to more and longer pieces of code. And I'll dive into that next, actually, because the second thing that I think that generative AI is going to do a great job of is automating all the boring stuff. And that goes around automating the data pre-processing, any of kind of the data munging, data cleaning tasks, all of these things will eventually get easier and easier because they are part of that same vein of kind of generating code snippets for functions and things that we have to do on a repetitive basis. For example, if you actually have to clean a data set that has a bunch of missing values, right? You can write a chat GBT prompt that does some specific tasks, such as if it's over, you know, a specific value to clean it or to create a function that imputes a bunch of missing variables based on the average. Additionally, one of the things that I've been using chat GBT a lot for is just to take data to, that goes from a long format and turn it into a wide format so that I, I can actually use it for data visualizations. This is something that's incredibly boring and tedious in SQL that now they can do for you in just a single prompt. Which then kind of naturally leads me to the third most useful thing that I use ChatGPT and AI for, which is now actually doing a lot of automatic data visualization and building data visualization apps. For me, some of this comes along the line that I don't remember how to import matplotlib every single time. And when I want to visualize a scatter plot immediately, I generally just forget what the common kind of syntax is for all this. ChatGPT now has the ability to actually build dashboards and actually deploy them to the cloud. There's a company or a startup right now that I'll send to you in this link that essentially automatically deploys Streamlit apps to the cloud of dashboards that you just write in the prompt of what you want. For example, in this one, I'm writing in the prompt that I want to visualize S&P 500 for the past 20 years. And just with a few short clicks, it creates that dashboard for me. Now, this is pretty awesome. And I'm sure there's going to be some errors if we want to get into more complex dashboards and such. But the best part of it is that a lot of the times it gives you the code. And as long as that code is mostly right or there's a few errors in there that you can just easily correct then as long as that time that it took for it to generate that is faster than what you could have done on your own I feel like it's adding a lot of value and it's only going to get better and better in the next few years the next thing that I think chat GPT and AI does really well with is actually writing comments for documentation right now if you think about it it can take a prompt and it can essentially spit out code right, given that prompt pretty well. You can also do the same thing in reverse. So if you've written a function on your own and you need to describe it or you need to create unit tests, ChatGPT can actually take that function and then describe exactly what the function is doing to someone else or what the entire script is doing if you paste the entire script in there. Basically just giving it the prompt to just say, describe what this file is doing in terms of its inputs and outputs as if I'm documenting code. And because it's been trained on so much GitHub code and Stack Overflow code, it does a really, really good job of describing code 
and explaining kind of how it works. I also use it many times to just take my code here and there and format it into the correct syntax and the correct kind of nice formatting, especially when it's not written in like a nice way. But additionally, I can also ask it to summarize entire project reports. So if I'm writing a project or presenting an analysis, I can get it to help me out with part of the analysis by continuing on from where I left off as well. well lastly, one of the best things that I see ChatGBT used for in the future that's not entirely used for now is actually writing SQL queries. Now I say that SQL queries are generally pretty tiresome because of the way that you're doing a lot of the same joins that you do repeatedly. And while some of the autocomplete editors do work out well, it's not perfect when it comes to actually doing a lot of those joins. So if you describe the schema of what you have right now, ChatGPT can generally get 90% of the way there in doing easy queries and probably 80, 70 to 80% of the way there when you're doing a little bit more hard difficulty queries, such as involving self-join, sub-queries, window functions and such. The problem comes that when it does mess up, it messes up pretty spectacularly. And even the, the code might compile itself, but the data underlying can also be wrong. Which brings me to kind of concluding and summarizing in terms of how I think we should be using ChatGPT and these AI tools in the future. Over the next few years, it's going to get better and better, but it's almost always, not always, 100% correct. And it can teach bad practices, especially if you're a novice that's starting to learn something versus an expert that's already pretty good at identifying identifying exactly what the mistakes are. In that same vein, if you are learning a new tool and you're using ChatGPT, it can definitely help you get better and better. But at the same time, if you know that it's not going to be right, you know, 10% of the time, then it'll be really hard for you to learn because you're not understanding the fundamentals behind what it's actually coming out with. And then you can't also be 100% accurate that it's teaching you the right thing. I think the best use cases is to continue to experiment and find specific workflows that you can integrate AI to make yourself more efficient. So all those kind of five things that I just said, generating code snippets, automating data pre-processing, visualizing data, all those things can be done more efficiently if you already know how to do them. And you can edit the underlying code when you see the mistakes. I'm really excited for the future of AI development because I think that it's only going to get better and better and we're going to be building more customized trained models. For example, there's already tools out there that help you connect to your own SQL database and will basically analyze the history of your queries to understand what kind of queries you might want in the future given the prompts that you write. And that's something that I myself want a lot in my day-to-day -day when I'm doing analytics. So what do you guys think? Do you guys think AI plus human workflows are the future? Do you guys think that AI is just a fad that's going to go away? Let me know in the comments below, but I'd love to hear what you think. And please remember to like and subscribe on this video. Let me know what you think about AI. Is it going to take over the world? Is it the future of our data science development? Are data scientists going to be extinct in the next five years in general? Let me know. I'll talk to you guys later.